I met Mike about 11 years ago working uh, at Charlie, which was a foster care program, and I left that job to take a job with the Department of Children and Family and one of the first things we decided to do was to bring all of the lawyers to Orlando for a big conference and ask uh, youth who had aged out of foster care to come and Mike was one of those young people and that day he was such a standout in the crowd of kids um, that it wasn't just me, it was many of the lawyers afterwards went up to him and you know we just we spent some time talking to him and we were all telling him, Mike, you got to go to law school. I mean, you are a natural uh, to be an advocate for people. You need to go to law school. I met Mike really about 10 years ago and there was something different about Mike. He was president of Youth Shine. Uh, he was really advocating for kids, but you could tell there was something in him that was a little different. I was the assistant dean at uh, St. Thomas University and uh, encouraged him to apply and uh, gave him a solid recommendation for, for entrance. So, I mean, that relationship has existed. But, but to be honest with you, Mike has given as much to me and, um, as I think I've ever given to him. He worked with me in Washington. Uh, we brought him up one summer when he was waiting for his bar results. So he had an opportunity at that time to see child welfare from a national perspective. And he was as committed then to, to change as I've ever seen in a young person. Knowing Mike's story is what originally led us to actually make an offer to Mike to begin his employment and work as a lawyer, as a trial lawyer. And knowing his story was important to us in terms of his work ethic, in terms of where he was from, but more importantly than anything is, is that he actually wanted to help people. I admire uh, the way Mike has been able to turn some of the hardships he faced throughout his life because it's certainly difficult to grow up in this world without a solid family structure. And yet he has stayed positive in his life and his outlook um, you know, he, he's a positive force of the world. When he came into care, he came into care with his uh, younger brother. And they were like uh, two peas in a pod. Uh, and he was committed, because he was the older brother, he was committed to being the best brother he could be. Mike's life has been full of challenges. And he's overcome every single one. I think one of the biggest ones was probably knowing that it's okay to ask for help. Uh, that it's okay to not have all the answers. He's open to advice. Um, he's compelled by this sort of mission-oriented view of life. I feel that Mike, in the, in the long term, uh, hopefully will be sitting uh, at the head of this state and sitting there to try and help others who have gone through the same path that he's gone through. And in the short term, I think he, he's, he's got a long road to haul and a tough road to haul in terms of his desires to help people and seeing how he's going to get his hands dirty and he's going to do what he can to help people. And in the short term, I, I see him learning and gathering more information and becoming better and better every day. I think there are a few young people who are more deserving of the Pathfinder Award. Uh, it, it, it recognizes excellence of folks who have overcome challenges. And, and, and I think Mike not only has excelled and, and overcome some of the challenges in life, but really excelled to a level that few young people do. Um, and I think it's uh, an inner passion he's got, an inner courage, and a willingness to work hard. Uh, he embodies everything about that award. He's somebody who has overcome his struggles and it hasn't held him back. He's been able to do many incredible things already, and you know he's in his early 30s, so what he's going to accomplish in this world is going to be unbelievable. So here's this guy, and all he wants to do in this world is the next right thing and help people.